Welcome to the Miami Jewish Film Festival, the world's largest of its kind. We want to thank all of our members and sponsors, community partners, all of you film lovers, and especially our presenting sponsors, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for their continued support throughout all of these years. My name is Cantor Lisa Siegel. I am the proud cantor of Temple Judea of Coral Gables. And I'm excited to be moderating a virtual conversation with filmmaker, director, and I'm going to add incredible musician, Hershey Felder, from the movie Musical Tales in the Venetian Jewish Ghetto, which is premiering at this year's festival. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to say I, I have, I was, it was a thrilling film. I loved listening to it. I loved the music. I've I watched it twice. My husband watched it twice. It was really an inspiring film. And so I want to just ask you some questions and and um about you know that I was curious about. So you had this plan, Hershey, to gather these musicians together. I I think of it almost as like the ingathering of the exiles who for the past five centuries flocked after the Inquisition to Venice. Um and um, I, it also occurred right before, as you said, Shavuot and you celebrated it there in Venice. And I was wondering what was the connection to Venice and Shavuot, not, I'm sorry, not Venice, but Shavuot, what was that purposeful or was it coincidental? Was it, is there some symbolism to Shavuot, um, that you filmed it at that particular time? Um, the symbolism had to do with everybody's availability. <laughs> so, you know, um, it just so happened that when I looked at the availability of, of everybody gathering and who I could get, um, who I wanted there, it turns out that week of uh, of June in, in that season last year was Shavuot week. And I said, well, let's do it based on that and let's keep the tradition going. If it wasn't Shavuot, we would have simply done a gathering, but it happened to have worked in our favor, you know, but filmmaking is a lot like that. Sometimes things happen, you know, uh, fortuitously, and this did in this way, and it lended a kind of, um, uh, you know, an esoteric uh, underscore to the whole thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, beautiful. Um, so, you know, I, I when I was viewing this, I, I kept thinking to myself, is this a movie about Venice and its Jewish history, or is this a movie about the music of our tradition? It was, it was very, you know, obviously it was there was a there was great intention on um, weaving, you know, in mostly the klezmer and strings throughout the storylines and. Can you just elaborate about this and your intention, you know, to this musical detail? And really, in your mind, what is this, what was this movie truly written about? Well, to me, I do, because of who I am artistically, I do hear things through music. I process a lot through music. But music is also the life's blood to how we move through every day. If you think about your day, so much is uh, about nature and sound and how we process sound and what sound makes us feel. And in terms of Jewish people in general, singing, making music has been a part of our tradition always. If you're a musician, that's, that's your life, which we all are, because that was the group of people that got together. So Everything that one does, and if one identifies publicly and privately as Jewish, is processed through that. If we think around, if we think about shul, we sing. If we think about sitting around the Shabbos table, or if we sit uh, thinking about a Yom Tov table, we sing. We make music. It's part of who we are. It's part of who our expression. You know, you go to shul for Torah reading. We sing. It's it's all that. Um, it's community, it's coming together, it's a way to express emotion, it's a way to get through the troubled times, it's a way to celebrate the great times. So with all that said, um, it's very difficult for me to see anything, especially Jewish existence, without that, because it's so it's so relevant. And in fact, if you look at anything Jewish, whatever it's about, you will have a very distinct color of sound. We 
offset the idea of the gondola sound. We hear a few little things of, of the musicians playing gondolier music, which is very different because gondolier music is not the music First of all, it didn't exist then, you know, 500 years ago. What would have existed is music that would have come from all over. And here we were, this group of um, wayward souls ending up in Venice, as would have happened for the past 500 some odd years, bringing our sack of wares, so to speak, with us. And what we brought was our music. And I thought, we are going to be who we are and do what we do in the context of a, a world that was... I think, as I say in the film, uh, that uh, gave Jews a safe place when the world was largely unwelcoming to us. Um, it's amazing now how poignant that seems given what we're experiencing around the world and how many people are saying, what happens if and where do I go? And you think for 500 years, except during the Nazi occupation, um, because, of course, well, even during the Nazi occupation, but then it was used as a, jail, a real jail. Um, this is where Jews were able to go uh, and and be there uh, from all over the world. It's sort of staggering to think that we are thinking in those terms. Um, it's staggering to think that the whole idea of a place for Jews is not just a curiosity and something from 500 years ago, but it's it's something that we have to think about today where Jews can be safe. Um, and for the large part, as we say in the film, Jews were safe there. One of the things that didn't happen were arbitrary killings or people coming in and rampaging in it. They were safe. They were locked. And of course, when Napoleon came, that was one of the staggering things I have no idea about, that it was Napoleon who actually opened up the gates of, right. of you know, and right. allowed Jews to live as equals, um, but for 200 and, uh, 270 years, about 271 years, they were locked in there at night. Um, and it had this duality of being a place where Jews could be and also for being safe uh, because outsiders were not there. Um, it's fascinating. Fascinating that we are now in 2024 and thinking about exactly the same things in the context of these centuries that have dealt with this before it's it's kind of shocking so it's you know and I made this film before obviously before any of that happened but I just the resonance now is really quite something yeah and I I it, yeah and it's very poignant as you say and I am curious um if, if you've been in touch with some of the people you know since the war broke out I'm like, what is the climate there now? And is there anti-Semitism? Is there not? Is what do you well, know? I live there. I live there. So I happen oh, to be you live in, there. Yes. I happen to be in New York on stage now, but I live in Venice and in Florence. That's home. So okay. actually, um the where we're having dinner, the terrace, that's my house in Venice. So um the I'm in touch with them all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And tell me about these, this particular group of artists who you brought over. It was funny. I was watching again last night and I I'm looking at Tova Fetchu and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, how do I know this? I, I know I've seen her in things and, you know, and I read her bio and, I, and then I realized I know it, it was kissing Jessica Stein. She played the Jewish mother in that movie and she was wonderful in that and it all came back. But what, how did you decide, you know, do you have relationships with these people? Um, you know, what, what was the impetus for this particular group that you brought over? And I must say also that the cellist it was incredible. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, astonishing, isn't it? Yes, astonishing. It's, beautiful. it's just a good group of artists. You know, that you had relationships with before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, tell me your, yeah, I, you know, you're a filmmaker and 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 writer, but obviously you're a musician. Tell me, you know, where does that play in your life and your career? Because you obviously, you know, do you tell me what you do with your with your your playing? Do you are you somebody that plays in synagogue or you do you play with groups? I mean, is that something that you regularly do? 
No, I mean, you know, I'm a musician, I'm a performer, and uh, and I play with artists in this way, um, you know, for my work, for what I do. And uh, this was a wonderful time to be a able to bring people together. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I was very moved by the musical selections that you chose. Mm -hmm. um, these are very close to me as a cantor um, from Ernest Bloch's the prayer, um, you know, where what where was it written from Yentl, um, the beautiful, you know, the Yiddish melodies, um, and of course, um, Schindler's List, um, you know, that's something that I use every um, Yom Kippur afternoon um, during um, my Yisker services, um, and of course, ending with the Kol Nidre. Um, tell me about those choices Tell me about the sequence and ending with the Kol Nidre. Um, you know, tell me about the infusion of music using those particular, you know, choices, why they were used and in, and in that order. Again, these are things that we just sort of planned. And then as the film unfolded, they kind of unfolded in that kind of natural order. Because when you tell a story of this sort, where you go here and there and everywhere, the elements of the story, the story revealed themselves as we went on. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so, you know, there's a lot more. I mean, there's probably 20 hours more. Oh, my goodness. You know, okay. That, that, yeah, there's a lot. And the Klezmer group was incredible. Um, just, yeah. Um, so the long history of the Jewish existence from the 1500s, it, it was all very fascinating and it's obviously very richly preserved there. Um, why do you think that this story was so important to tell? And and obviously it moves you personally being living there, but why do you think it was so important? And I, I'm sure now is a whole different reason, but at the time you wrote it, Why did I think it was so? Well, you see, I mean, you use the reference that I wrote it, but the truth is what I did was for this film was I took elements and put together and only wrote thereafter once I discovered what the story was. So it wasn't written in advance. Okay. Do you know? Yes. I structured based on putting everybody together, you know? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself i know you live there now but tell me where you're from where you live I was, I was born in montreal canada i grew up in an environment a religious jewish home environment um and i had a jewish education and all the rest you know and grew up as a musician grew up serious that way and as time went on it was clear my this was my storytelling way you know, and this was how I was going to evolve my experiences into art. And over the years, I made friends in the Jewish community, which I very much so am a part of, and and evolved this kind of storytelling in this way. Okay, and have you, and tell me, are there, can you talk about any of your other work in film and writing and directing any of that? Well, a lot of theater. Um, film is, there's been 18 films now, uh, Jewish subjects, quite a few of them. So all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and it's it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime of work, a lifetime of piano playing, a lifetime of storytelling, all these kinds of things. And how long have you lived in Venice? Uh, Florence for six years and Venice for two. And I live in both. Okay. And what makes Venice, the Jewish community of Venice, different from Florence or Rome or, you know, what what do you see as is, is different and unique? Um, uh, what do I see as different and unique between Florence and Venice? A any of the other um, cities in Italy that have Jewish communities. What, what, is it the history of Venice and and how the Jews were welcomed there? What if the Jewish communities? The Jewish communities are similar because they're actually all under a, a particular Italian umbrella. 
you know, which I think emanates from Rome. But Venice has a particular history because Venice was an island unto its well, <laughs> 300 islands unto itself. But there were three islands that were Jewish islands, and those were particular to Venice. Um, and the ghetto, as the movie describes, became what it was. And so that was that was quite relevant. But you have to realize that the Roman Jewish community is 3000 years old. So right. way before Venice. But Venice was particular because it had these islands that could protect. And um, it's very moving to be there, you know. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I must say I was very attracted to your Shavuot dairy meal. I was yeah. jealous. Uh. I, I want I want to be invited if I ever get to uh, Venice. Um, wonderful. Um, and and how are you excited about the debut of this film in the Miami Jewish Film Festival? Are you planning to come here? I'm not able to because I'm on stage during the time, but I think it's so exciting that that you have all, you know, embraced this, these two films, the uh, this and the other one. And it's it's just very kind. You know, very kind of you to show these things, especially when it's such a timely thing. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, more it's it's more relevant now than it ever could have been. It's so beautifully done. The music, um, the the you know, the the you know, the the cast, the the the, the beautiful the the sentiments shared by everyone in it, the stories that you all shared together, very poignant and very, very, very important for this time. So I I really, really very much appreciate it. I want to thank you, mm -hmm. creator and director, Hershey Felder, from the movie Musical Tales in the Venetian Jewish Ghetto for joining us today. And once again, I want to thank you. I want to thank all the members and sponsors and community partners and volunteers and all of you film lovers for participating in the incredible Miami Jewish Film Festival. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure to speak with you. And you too as well. And all the best luck. Thank you very much and stay safe.